Hey, uh, good morning, beautiful people. Um, so, um, today, <laughs> we're going to be talking about Lori Harvey. Uh, so many people have asked me to chime in because I have two daughters, and I guess it made sense to them to get my opinion on, you know, just what the media and what we see and how Lori Harvey is getting down. Okay. So, here I go jumping head first into the pool okay but um let me start by saying that it's i, I don't necessarily know if it's going to be so much about lori as it is going to be about my experiences having lived my life like lori if that makes sense um you know, at an early age, I was exposed to sex by some things that happened in my past. Um, and, and so for me, sexual activity and sexual promiscuity was not a big deal. So I have to openly admit that by 24, which I think is the age that Lori is, okay, I was doing the same thing, okay? Um, you know, it t when I look out at her, I just see a young girl who um uh, is living her life, you know, and if she were a male, we probably wouldn't even be having this conversation, right? So that's the A side of the coin is that I, Tammy Roman, by the age of 24, cuz I cuz okay, cuz let me just say this the reason why I say sexual promiscuity is because I know we, even throughout this conversation, we're not acting like she not having sex. Because I firmly believe that she is. Okay. And so from that standpoint, by the time I was 24, I had four, at least four, sexual partners maybe five, that, you know, I was out there too. And then it wasn't until I met my ex-husband that, you know, things settled down for me, okay? So her going, because I saw on the blogs where they like went, they, they chronicled her activity for 2019, right? And so they started off when they, and I, and let me just be clear, I've never seen any of this about the guys, okay? So why they chose to do Lori, I don't know. But uh, they uh, started with like, I think it was like Diddy's son, Justin, and then she then she was actually with Diddy. Then they, ha they had her with few, uh, Trey Songs, and then, then it was Future. And then it was, I think Future lasted a, a little minute. And then now, of course, we all know that she's with Michael B. Jordan, which is a, an extremely cute couple, okay? And shout out to Michael for not letting whatever he has heard or seen or read about this young lady deter him from getting involved with her and really trying to go about it in a way where he has opted to get to know her. And clearly he liked what he was experiencing, which led them on the vacation. And, you know, and now finally they've come public with their relationship. I know Steve is happy. Um, but you know, I, I do feel that, uh, as I said, it's not the fact that they did that to her and laid out all of the people that she's been linked to. And then I saw in the comments, he was like, uh uh, she lost me with the father and the son and all this other shit. And I don't know. I, I'm not going to try to comment on somebody. She's younger than me and she's somebody else's child. Okay. So I'm not raising her. So I'm not commenting on what I've read or seen. I'm basically talking about, you know, the similarities in our lives, you know, like here again, by 24, I had been linked to a couple people. And you know what, it didn't stop. It didn't stop me getting married. It didn't stop me having a beautiful family. And you just, 
you know, have to be open to receive the person that is going to receive you with whatever your past may be. And so uh, here again, her and Michael B. Jordan are a couple. Now, people wanted my opinion because my of my daughters, right? I've been very vocal um, with my daughters being uh, not having any sexual partners, okay? And, and they hate when I talk about it too, but... Um, and so they, they felt that maybe I would have a difference of opinion. Let's just, because I'm always going to be honest, right? Anytime I try to have conversations or talk about something, I'm just giving my honest thought process. It's not everybody's thought process, but, you know, which, which we are all allowed to do is have differences of opinions, right? So with my daughters, you know, um, I'm not going to lie at all. Um, I knew that, you know, okay, so I'm not going to try to sugarcoat the shit. Okay. So I, I fucked. Okay. When I was young and it didn't give me nothing. It didn't give me nothing. It didn't give me nowhere. It got me heartache and heartbreak. Okay. In retrospect, I understand that in life you go through things. And you have to go through to get to. And so it was the going through, dealing with these no nothing, ain't good for nothing, ain't got nothing, uh, men. I almost said the N word. I'm trying to stop saying it. Um, that when I met my ex-husband, I felt like he was my knight in shining armor, my Prince Charming. Well, we all know how that went. But moving forward, it didn't stop me from finding love again, right? But ha having dealt with so many frogs, <laughs> I didn't want my daughters to have to go through that. So this term is not a term. It's something that I made up. I was like an adamant realist with my daughters, meaning I was adamant about them not having sex, okay? And I sat them down, I had several conversations, several is, is like just minimizing the real amount of conversations I had with them about sex and how men did me. Like I didn't sugarcoat anything about my relationships. You know, I talked about the first time I had sex and how I lost my virginity and how that went nowhere and, you know, and how it wasn't exciting, you know? And so, you know, I was just very honest. I took them around to Planned Parenthood. I took them around to, you know, like neighborhoods where it's like girls were 13 and 14 having babies and couldn't continue going to school and, you know, stuff. Like I really tried to show them a world where it can go left, you know, having sex at a young age and being promiscuous. Why I say adamant realist is because, um, you know, the heat of the moment might hit you one night. You know, I don't know if you out with your friends, if you going to remember my voice in the back of your head going, leave that dick in its pants. You know, I don't know, you know, like, girl, lock it up. You know, I don't know if you going to honor that. So the realist part of me also had conversations where it's like, if you feel like you want to, please come to me. Let's go get birth control, pop, 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 all of that type of stuff. Hence me taking them around to Planned Parenthood and stuff like that. Showed them the clips of me getting the abortion over, like all of that. Like I was very open with my children. Something bit the shit out of me. Uh, I was very open with my children. So now that my oldest is 26, my youngest is 24, they don't flow through life a la most women. I can't even, most young girls, I can't even narrow it down to Lori. You know what I'm saying? Like I see Ari with her cute self with money bag 
we going, she fucking. I mean, she already got a kid. You know, I see Jada with, uh, he's little baby. I don't want to mix up my babies. Um, and, you know, we not going to act like they not fucking. They all young, but they, they doing it. And so sometimes I be feeling like, did I, did I, did I put too much pressure on my girls to not experience life, right? Because my concern was hearing my mother's voice saying, raise them up in the way that they should go. And sex before marriage is not the way that they should go. And so I like beat that into their brains, you know, for for lack of better verbiage. And, and they're living like that, okay? Well, Jazz, I don't, we're not gonna talk about Jazz. I don't think she's had sex with the guy. There's been no penetration, I'm just gonna leave it like that. She's gonna kill me for saying that, but I mean, I'm just trying to be real with y'all, with, with, with the family that's listening, okay? With the family that's listening. Um, and so I wonder sometimes, am I, did my upbringing or how me and my mother tried to raise my girls stifle their social development, their social activities and circles and, you know, getting out there and dating and being you know, seeing what you like, like my child's, uh, my daughter's godmother, may she rest in peace, Laura Fogelman, she used to say, how are you going to know what type of dick you like if you don't experience the dicks, you know, and so, and I used to be like, don't listen to Laura, we don't do that shit around here, you know, and so, but, but then now as I'm older, and, and I'm battling with this conversation, because I try to live by, as for me and my house, we gonna follow the Lord, okay? Which would then stick with what I've taught them. Sex before marriage is fornication. And not what you, I mean, you're not gonna get nothing out of it anyway. You, you're really not. But, um, but then there's that part that goes, but these girls that's out here and they, just living, they live in the life that you lived and you turned out okay. And God knows your heart and has accepted you for who you are. So wouldn't he do the same for your daughters? So that's the hard conversations, people. <laughs> Those are the hard questions <laughs> that I, as a mother, deal with w as it pertains to my daughters. Now, I, I'm always so very proud of the fact that, you know, my daughters aren't out here sleeping around and that, that, that that's not their lane and that they are focusing on their education and their, their dreams and their businesses and, you know, things of that nature and just trying to get their lives right before they interject uh another piece to the puzzle so um i'm always very proud of that but do i look out at my daughters and go um you know particularly like with my oldest daughter, like i want her to have a boyfriend and you know somebody that she spends time with and company and companionship and she's had s several boyfriends you know and then when they find out that she's not having sex, you know, of course, that's it's a little a little while before the end of the relationship, because, you know, being a virgin, I guess it's too much for them to bear. And, you know, they're not trying to wait on a pussy, you know, or whatever. But sometimes I do go, did I mess her up? Like, should she be out there like a Lori living her life and, you know, experiencing fun and vacations and, you know, that life that's, that Lori's living. But here again, now I will say this, Lori's life is not the majority. It's the exception, okay? Because a lot of bitches out there is like me. You just got fucked and stuck and now, you know, <laughs> you in a rut, <laughs> you know? Um, so, you know, you, you know, like, 
you know, it ain't gonna always be that glamorous life, you know, child, let's just keep it all the way real. But I'm talking from the standpoint of like just living her life and experiencing more. Did I, you know, like hinder her from being able to step out and do that, you know? So let's wrap it up. Lori Harvey, if she was a man, y'all wouldn't even be having this conversation. Lori Harvey reminds me of myself. And here again, I turned out fine. And I've had two husbands and I have two amazing daughters. And, you know, it didn't stop me from growing and excelling and having an amazing career. And, you know, you got to kiss a couple of frogs to get to the prince. You know, like it's happened. It's happened. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like Sierra kissed some frogs and then she got her prince, which was, you know, Russ. And, and so Lori now is with Michael and we just hope that this relationship lasts because they're cute as all get out. And I know that Steve is very happy about this choice. <laughs> um, I know her mom is probably very happy about this choice. Um, and so, you know, like I, I wish them nothing but the best and blessings and abundance in their union. And um, that's it, you know, and if you guys have any insight, comments, opinions that will be constructive with my challenge in terms of how I'm feeling with my daughters. Like, did I do the right thing or did I hinder their growth? Please drop them down below. I'd love to hear what y'all think because I can only, I can only, uh, I mean, like, you know, I can't go back and change nothing, but I would like, I'd love to hear differences of opinions and, and different thought processes because it's, it all adds to elevation and the growth of our minds. Um, but please be constructive. Please be constructive. Please be, uh, you know, respectful. You know, don't get out of the pocket in the comments because there's no need for that. Um, okay, so that's it. I'm getting on off. Um, yeah, have a good three-day weekend, everybody. <laughs>